In the previous episodes, we've talked a lot about, you know, cutting the image, putting the right aspect ratio, making it smaller size and optimizing it. Is it really necessary? And that is a question we're going to encounter a few times. And you'd be surprised to learn that sometimes it isn't. But that will be your own conclusion because you will also note that I often tell you that people have very diverse opinions about this. And that's what an opinion is all about. Welcome to another episode here of Better Images. And in this one, we are going to look at the settings within the WordPress editor for full size and then also for large. And what does that mean? How does it affect your website as well as your images? Or how does it affect your images and then your website? I've got here a page with a few images on that I've created in a page within WordPress editor, also lovingly known as Gutenberg. So I've got these images here and it's just a page with images on it. I'll scroll down in total. There are eight of them and you can see they are quite large. So if we go all the way to the top again, you know, the normal mumbo jumbo that comes standard with 2019 theme. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a hard reload, a hard refresh on Windows that is Control F5. And I want you to observe how this page loads. Control F5. And there we start it. And you can see it is taking slow. Take into account I said on the internet that was born in 1922. So that has to be factored in. But as you scroll down, and you know something about images, you will know this is loading rather slowly. Now, in most cases, when you're working with high resolution images like this, and you come from a photography background, photographers and people who appreciate this won't mind because they want to see all that exquisite detail. But if this is not the focus of the page, you just have that feeling like, oh, this is a waste of time and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And I go make a cup of Milo and then I come back and I'm still waiting. And oh, there's a guy coming down the escalator. He's also probably waiting. So our eight images are loading extremely slowly. We're going to test this page to have an idea of exactly how the performance of this site is currently doing in terms of the world of SEO, where it is very important. It's not done yet. There's still one more image to come. So let's wait for the entire page to load. And then we go and test it on GT metrics. Okay, right. And I think with this lady, it should be the last one. Okay, so let's go all the way just to the top, cycle through all of them. Let's grab the URL and go to GT metrics, paste our URL, and then test your site. This is done on good internet speed. So what you're going to see is that it's going to take much faster for them than it did for me. But in the end, the total page size will remain the same. And we're going to look at that. So your page speed score and your Y slow score, these are actually okay. You immediately see here when you look at the recommendations that it's about optimization of images, but we're not going to look at the optimization. We just look at the total page size. So those eight images over here gives us in total 3.73 megabytes. And you see the little red arrow next to it. If you hover over it, it will tell you relative to other pages on the internet, the average total page size is 3.27 megabytes. This is a recommendation. Remember, if you have like a portfolio with high resolution artwork on it that you want to present to a client, then you are going to be above average. That is why there is such a thing as an average. On the other hand, if you are writing a blog about your thoughts about yesterday and you don't paste an image, it's going to be much, much lower than that. That's why it's an average. It's only an indication, but it tells you this is quite a big page, more or less. So what's going on here and why is it so big? Let's go back to our page and we go into WordPress to the admin panel. From here, we go to pages, all pages. And this one I had created, I called large. Let's go and see what I've done here within the WordPress editor. I've brought in these images, right? So that's standard, nothing special there. So let's start with the top one. The first one, if you click on it, 
we inspect it over here in the options sidebar and you will see that the image size is set to full size. The width is more than 5,000 pixels and the height more than 4,000. And the first word that should come into your mind is ridiculous. You do not need that amount of resolution at all. When you are working with large images like this, the idea is to go and put it on large. And you will see what WordPress will do is constrain it to the width of 1024 pixels. That is what it will do to the width, and that is the standard large setting. It will always keep the longest side of the image at 1024 pixels, right? So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. This is what we call a landscape image. A landscape is a horizontal stretched image. So the width is 1024. Let's go to the next one. Click on it. Again, huge. So we put it on large. Same thing, 1024. Observe that the height changes relative to the image you brought in, but I never talk about that. Let's go to the next one, click on it, and we say large, again 1024. Now we work with a portrait. Portrait is vertically stretched image. If I click on it, again, it's quite a large image. I put it on large. But now the width is 684 and the height is 1024. Remember what I told you, WordPress is going to constrain the longest side to 1024. Let's go to the next one. And this one is also portrait. So you will see the height is going to be 1024. Same one for the next. So we put them all on large and let's run through all of them. And large. All right. So we've put them all on large. Let's update it. And the first thing I want to show you, why does WordPress choose 1024? It's a default setting in WordPress. I've updated it. Go to the admin sidebar. Then you go down to settings. And from settings, you choose media. This is what happens when you upload images into the media library is that WordPress will generate the following sizes according to thumbnail, the medium size, and the large size. So here you see maximum width is 1024, maximum height is 1024. So when you choose that preset in the WordPress editor for large size, this is how it's going to work. Many page builders use this setting directly within the page builder. So when you see these settings within your page builder, remember these constraints, that if you have a landscape image, one that is horizontal, the maximum width is going to be 1024. When you have a portrait, the maximum height is going to be 1024, which means you cannot stretch the width of a portrait image. If you want, you can go and make changes here, but this is default, and this is what most people are happy with. Right. We have saved our page. Let's go to the front end, visit site, and it's going to reload it, and you will see it will look very different now. Here, because it is constrained to 1024 pixels for the height, it doesn't stretch all the way. Probably what you need to do is go and center align those images. Now that we have moved from full size to large within the WordPress editor, how will this affect our site's performance? Let's go to GT Metrics again. We open another instance of GT Metrics and we paste our URL and let's test the site. And this time it should go much quicker because there's a lot less to load in terms of file size. And indeed it does. Let's first just look at these two scores. I'm not a big fan of the scores. There are people that have sleepless nights over every percent. They're trying to get it to 100%. But I'm an imperfectionist. And I'm actually lying. I'm kind of a perfectionist. Let's, let's get back to that. Let's look at these two. And this is going to surprise you. And this is what I'm saying. Everything people is telling you online about images, you're going to be surprised we just reduced the file size, basically, of those images according to what we think is logic, right? We think we should get a better score. But when we go between these two, we don't get a better score. 
we have a faster loading time and this was the original page size. Now our page size is less than one megabyte. Awesome. But guess what? Our score hasn't improved. So this can be a big surprise to you. The other thing that's going to surprise you is when you look here, this is the one that we did at large. Optimized images get a score of 79%. If we go to the one that we use the full size, exactly the same. Nothing has changed. The only thing that has changed is your loading time and your total page size. Of course, that matters. You have to consider that on most websites, you're not only going to have those images, you're going to have a lot of other stuff. They're all going to compound. They're going to make it a mountain to load in the end. And that's when you have to start pushing through images that are optimized for your site. So what you've learned today is that in WordPress editor, you have the option to go and set the size of the image when you're working within the page as you load them. And in fact, by default, WordPress actually brings it in at full size when you're working in the editor. I'll add a new image here at the bottom. Let's go to the media library and we choose just this image over here. We've worked with it. As you bring it in, you will see it is set to large by default. If you need it to be full size, you will have to go and choose full size. But the moment you look at it from this point of view, it is too big. From here, you have the options to maybe put it at 75% or 50%, and you will see the pixels getting less or even 25%. Let's say you want it big, but you don't need it at 100%, then 50% will do just fine. Otherwise, large is a good option to go. If you look at medium, is maximum 300 pixels, and then thumbnail is maximum 150 pixels but it's also going to apply a crop of one-to-one. -one. That is what a thumbnail is all about. So by default, WordPress editor brings in your images at large. If you need it to be bigger, put it on full size. If you need it to be smaller, put it on medium. So this brings us to a question that you will say is contradicting to everything I've told you in the previous episodes. If the image size and file size gives me the same page speed score as well as Wyslow score, why do I care? Why do I care? One, if you bring more content onto your site, 3.73 megabyte is going to shoot up easily to five or six megabytes. And for that, your images are starting to penalize you. And that's where you have to reduce the size of your page. The second thing you have to understand is the concept of optimization. Many people think optimization is connected to the file size. I have an image. One image is maybe five megabytes. The other image is only one megabyte. One megabyte is better, right? Not necessarily. And optimization has to do with what we refer to as compression. I'm going to stop here because all I want you to understand today is that when you are working with images, the file size may not necessarily affect your page speed and your Y slow score, but it will contribute to the bigger picture. This is a little bit food for thought that you can go and ponder it today over a cup of coffee with a rusk or something, a cup of tea in my case with a biscuit, and think a little bit about what do you understand about images. You can go and play around with it and do these tests yourself. I want you to throw caution to the wind. Do not fall into the trap of constantly sitting on GT metrics and checking your site out. Always start with looking at how your site looks. Is your site looking well? Did you make a good site? And how is the user experience? Everything you see here is mainly about how that page loads, what's happening in the background. Your user has no idea. So you have to weigh up user experience compared to the technical aspects. Sometimes you will have to go then back and make changes to the technical side. And what we got from all of this is that when you have images, it doesn't really matter the file size. They are going to give you the same score, but they will affect your loading time as well as your page's total size. 
and these things combined can affect your score. If just images, you may get away with it. The moment you start adding other contents to your site, it is important that you go for full image optimization, which includes smaller file size as well as optimization. Now, go take a brain break, get into your headspace and relax. See you in the next episode.